good morning. Thanks for coming out today. Uh, I have the midterms back. Uh, I'll hand them out at the end of class. Somebody told me it was too easy, but actually the mean is only 75, which I thought was a bit low. Uh, I suspect those students who don't come to class probably didn't get the euro dollar question. Um, those, those of you that are here today probably did just fine, but uh, the mean was 75 in any case. And uh, we'll put the uh, key up on the website today. Um, so today I'd like to finish our discussion of technical analysis. Okay? I have a little video clip of Jake Bernstein, and I actually dressed up like Jake today. Um, and uh, I don't know if I'll get into hedging or not, but I might. Uh, but it'll be a very uh, general introduction. I sent you an email uh, regarding uh, the use of futures and options by the airlines, uh, which I really would like you to, to read before Monday and start reading the hedging chapter because there's a lot in that email that describes what the airlines are doing in the markets, which is a real phenomena. And uh, we can use that as an example as we get into hedging. So uh, we left off with uh, a discussion of the four categories of technical trading. And uh, then I had sent you an email regarding the cotton market. And uh, I don't know, how, how many of you are trading cotton right now? Just, just one? Are you long or short? When? OK. Um, you're a brave soul. Uh, this article uh, was referring to the cotton market that I sent you, and it was looking at some technicals. And we'll look at a chart in a second, but basically, it was referring to the fact that uh, the cotton market is going uh, parabolic. Okay. Can you cut down the chatting in the back, please? Thank you. It's very distracting for me because I'm trying to talk to you. And if you're talking to somebody else, it disrupts the flow. Thanks. Um, so it discussed the fact that the market's going parabolic. But I woke up this morning and checked the Wall Street Journal. And uh, it says cotton futures is down by the limit. I don't know if you saw that this morning or spilt your cup of coffee uh, over the computer. Uh, the market has been rising rapidly, as, as the story says, uh, but uh, not today. It's down by the limit. Uh, I don't know if I discussed limit moves uh, early on in the class, but most contracts, not all of them, but most contracts have uh, a limit on the extent to which a price can change from one settlement to the next. Well, I see there's some trading here. It's down to it's at 2.93, which is less than the limit. I'll just bring up the chart here. So in the case of cotton, the contract size is 50,000 pounds. And there's a limit move of 3 cents per pound, which means that uh, it can only move 3 cents from the previous close. And that's what happened this morning. You see the market, as the article said, it's going parabolic, rising rapidly because of uh, surprise in the market with regard to China's imports. China's decided to buy a lot of cotton. They're a, a very swing trader in the market. Some years they'll export, some years they'll import, and China's a very large producer of cotton. But if we just look at, uh, well, let's look at today's price activity. Click on the, it's coming up. You can see that the, the market has gapped down dramatically uh, today. Um, well, I want more. This is a longer, a, a shorter time frame. This only gives me 15 minutes. But what happened this morning was um, the market opened, and initially it rose slightly, and then it traded down the limit. So if it's down the limit, um, as you can see here, this is what happened this morning. It opened at about 82.5, uh, and then it went up to 84.5, so it was up two cents. So while you were still sleeping, you were making some money. But then, then it dropped uh, the limit. And yesterday's close, let's suppose, was, uh, I think it was around 83 or something like that. Um, well, it must have been lower. I don't, I don't know what the close was, actually. Um, but it opened higher this morning, and then it dropped the limit. And when it drops the limit, there's no trading. The exchange specifies that it can only move three cents a day. So if yesterday's settlement was at at 80 cents, let's suppose, and today 
uh, and it was initially up, then the price got offered down to 77. Well, 77 is three cents under yesterday's settlement price, and if everyone wants to sell at 77 and no one's willing to buy, so the one side of the pit is saying want to sell, nobody wants to buy at that price, then it's locked down the limit and there's no trading. And as a result, you know, those that are long in the market can't get out because they can't reverse their positions. There's no trading. So we have to wait till Monday. Most exchanges will expand the limit if it hits the limit more than one day in a row. So this doesn't happen very often, but it happens once in a while. And I just wanted to illustrate that for you. Uh, okay, um, I want to check another market. Any questions on cotton, by the way? Yes. Um, it would be the exchange and uh, the clearinghouse. And the reason for having price limits is basically to uh, protect um, those on the other side of the market, to protect the financial integrity. Uh, you know, if some news comes into the market, uh, it could move rapidly in one direction. You know, cotton could move down 10 cents a pound. And uh, this would result in some very large margin calls. And uh, the clearinghouse is concerned about the financial integrity. So it's basically a, a measure to uh, allow the market to pause and, and rethink and, and uh, calm down, you know, because the psychology can take over. Uh, and it varies from contract to contract depending how volatile they are. As I said the other day, quite often uh, live hogs will hit the limit after these government reports come out. Uh, but there are some contracts that rarely ever hit the limit. So they, I mean, the exchange wants trading conducted. They don't like it when it hits the limit, but it's there for a reason. Yes? Is there an upper limit as well? Uh, well, the limit is, is a price move from the previous um, day's settlement, so it's either up or down, okay? So if yesterday's settlement was uh, 77, then the limit is either 80 cents or 74. Yes? So if the price hits the limit, then it, the limit gets doubled, right? Or uh, again, it, it depends on the exchange and the contract. Uh, there are some exchanges that uh, they might double it or it might be increased by 50 percent. You know, in the case of cotton, it's three cents. So if it hits the limit today, maybe on Monday the limit's four cents or four and a half, something like that. I'm sorry? Is that going to like appear in the contract, that the, the limit is changed, or how is that going to be? Well, it, um, to if you're trading the market, and you know, certainly the professional traders know what the limits are, and uh, so they would know, today we hit the limit, there's no trading, but they'll know on Monday it can actually move four cents from today's price. So suppose it closed yesterday at 80, today it's at 77. So then they might expand the limit. So on, on Monday, it could fall four cents below 77. So it could go down to 73. So it has to fall to the point where some traders are willing to buy, right? Because everyone wants to sell. Somebody has to be willing to buy. And this article basically says that this should be a buying opportunity in the cotton market. If you see it, uh, it's been going up so rapidly, uh, a lot of the uh, technical traders will be on the long side and now they'll be wanting to get out, given that the market's turned. And uh, so this might be a buying opportunity, a dip in the market. So they will change the limits to tr try to get trading going, but they want to protect the financial integrity at the same time. So it's a bit of a trade-off here. But there's nothing worse than uh, being on the wrong side of the market and have the price move the limit. I mean, you really don't get much sleep at night. Uh, a friend of mine who did a lot of trading, he always had a rule that if he was losing money, he'd stay in until he found himself getting up in the middle of the night and throwing up. That's when it was time to get out. Uh, I have a stronger stomach than that, but um, it's not much fun being on the wrong side of the market when there's a limit move. This is the gold contract. Uh, I throw this up because our um, email on technical trading referred to the fact that uh, in the gold market, we were uh, experiencing a double top, and this is what it looks like. Um, see, the market's been going up. 
there's a uh, shoulder formation, this is a neck, and there's the other shoulder. So that's why they're referring to uh, that, that uh, formation as being a double top. So that's just one example that uh, you read about, and uh, here it is in the gold market. Okay. So there's one final topic I'd like to finish off on technical trading before we have a look at Jake and that's that deals with commodity pools so there's a lot of words up on this slide but um, I've already mentioned uh, commodity pools uh, they're very large technical traders and the idea here is very similar to a mutual fund if you're an investor who wants to put some money into the futures market um, but you don't have a large amount of capital, or B, you don't really have the time to study the markets or you don't know what you're doing, you might put that money in the hands of a professional trader. So there are professional traders who start these, uh, they're called commodity pools, and they are licensed by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and they put together a prospectus, and they basically sell units or shares, and some of these you literally can get in for five or ten thousand dollars, it's not much money. Others have larger uh, capital requirements. Basically once they sell all the units, then they'll start trading. So they'll amass, you know, whatever it is, a hundred million or two hundred million dollars, uh, the pool gets closed, and then they start trading. As I said, uh, because they're trading across the spectrum of markets, you know, they're trading all over the world in every different market, uh, they can't possibly do the fundamental research, so most of them are technical traders. There's a controversy with regard to these pools because of the fact that they all follow technical rules, and as I said the other day, a lot of the technical rules are very similar. Y you know, there's only so many variations on an oscillator or a moving average. So as you can imagine, uh, they have controversy here because uh, they're starting to control more and more money. Uh, the latest data uh, shows us that they're controlling $44 billion in the market, and uh, they're highly leveraged, right? You're trading on margin, and uh, so these pools uh, can sometimes swing the market. And uh, if they're all following the same rule, you know, so suppose if we look at the cotton market, all the technical indicators are going to be buy, except if you're a contrarian. Then, you know, if you're following an oscillator, you might be short, but otherwise you're going to be long and then they'll all reverse at the same time. So given that they're all on the long side, the market's probably overshot its equilibrium, and uh, then they'll all reverse themselves and go short, and then it will overshoot on the other side. So that's the concern associated with pools. And I just give you two examples that I took from the Wall Street Journal this summer in soybeans and corn, and if you're reading the daily commentaries, excuse me, at the Chicago Board of Trade, they have excellent daily commentaries uh, for every uh, market, or the Wall Street Journal, you'll often see comments something like this. This is the soybean market, uh, this was the close on August 18th, it said coming into the session funds were estimated to be slightly net short, so by funds they're referring to these commodity funds, these mutual funds that are trading futures. Estimated to be slightly short, but by the end of the session, all those short positions were squared away, one trader said. Fund buying Monday totaled at least 7,000 contracts. The daily volume that day was 100,000, so they only had 7% of the market. So you might argue whether or not they, they could affect the price. In the corn market, commodity funds were huge buyers on the day, purchasing an estimated 20,000 contracts and continuing to liquidate their net short position in the market. That particular day, uh, total volume is 131,000, so the, the funds accounted for 15% of the trade. So you can see they're not insignificant. Um, and as a result, um, there's controversy, but CFTC has really put no limits on them. And in fact, the research hasn't been done to really understand what impact they do have on the market, if any. And some people argue they have, they have no impact. But uh, they are growing in importance. Uh, they're very attractive to a lot of uh, investors who have heard of the futures market and they like the idea of trading futures, uh, but they're scared to death to do it themselves, so they invest in one of these funds. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, my friend Jake, who's a uh,
technical trader. And um, this is pretty typical of, of what you'll see of technical traders.
Futures Magazine is the foremost source of information in the futures industry. With over 65,000 subscribers in 75 different countries, it reaches more successful traders, money managers, and investors than any publication in the world. I'm Joe Bernard, president of Futures Magazine. I have the opportunity to work with a number of people in the futures industry. One of those people is Jake Bernstein. Jake himself has been in the business for over 25 years. Jake is a prolific author, lecturer, and a noted researcher of the markets. Jake has written over two dozen books on the subject of futures and options trading. Jake has also been consistently one of the highest rated speakers at the biannual Futures Traders Conferences, which are sponsored by Futures Magazine. Jake, why do you call your trade seasonals? Well, seasonal is a pattern that occurs all the time, either between certain times of the year or between certain dates. So that's the key to all this. History repeats itself. Exactly, Dave. We know, for example, that the price of cattle tends to go up from late October until early November. We know that in gold, the price of gold tends to go up from late August until late September. <coughs> and in the stock market, stocks tend to go up from about the 4th of April to the 14th of April, a majority of the time. So it's not really important to figure out why they go up or down. It's just important to know that they do and they follow a pattern. And I have a chance of making money. Yeah, let, let me show you something that's really uncanny, Dave. Here, I've got a chart here of corn prices over the last 270 years. And over that period of time, we know that the price of corn has gone up in April and May about 70% of the time, and that's over 270 years. So the bottom line is that you've discovered a reliable way of knowing in advance which way prices are likely to go. Exactly. I've been trading for about three months. I like the, the seasonal aspect. I like all that historical data that appeals to my objective side. Um, and at this point, we're ahead. Um, over six grand, and that appeals to me also. It's not difficult to understand. <coughs> it's not difficult to get into the market. It's not difficult to work. It, it's simple and it's easy. If I could understand it, it seemed easy. It seemed it seemed like um, like we could do this. The seasonals made sense. Prove it to yourself that you can that it can be done and it works. And it's a great advantage because it doesn't cost you a penny. Right, you order the program, right, try it out for 30 days on paper. And it worked for me, and I, I think it worked for anybody that tried it. I love trading futures. It gave me the opportunity to leave a law practice where I had a lot of responsibility to spending all of my time taking care of my own affairs. And uh, since I've been doing it, which has been about five months, I'm doing quite well at it. It's met all of my expectations. And so I'm able to come out any day that I want to and come up to the top of the hill and hang by. Don't you deserve to start living the life you've always wanted? Isn't it about time to make a move in the right direction? Don't let this opportunity pass you by. For over 20 years, I've been teaching people all over the world, beginners and professionals alike, how to trade futures. And I can teach you, too. Trading futures is simple. Even if you know nothing about the markets now, you'll learn it all with my program. Now, for the first time, Jake Bernstein's easy-to-understand and easy-to-use Trade Your Way to Riches package can be yours. He will teach you, step-by-step, step, how to use the market history he has studied over the last 27 years. Just pop in the videos and you'll be on your way. Take 1, Introduction to Futures Trading is especially designed for beginners. Jake will teach you everything you need to know. You'll understand all the basics about futures trading, from what futures contracts are to how to place an order. All you have to do is pick up the phone, call your broker, and place your order. In the following three tapes, Jake reveals the information that many professionals use to predict where prices will go. He walks you through his easy-to-understand seasonal strategies and introduces you to his revolutionary no-brainer method of trading. You'll also receive Jake's Trade Your Way to Riches workbook, especially designed to use with the video series. <coughs> and included in this package is a special edition of Jake's Key Date Seasonals. This book identifies hundreds of easy-to-follow, no-brainer trades. It shows exactly what date to get into a trade and when to get out that have historically repeated up to 70, 80, even 90 percent. The complete Trade Your Way to Riches package can be yours for only three easy payments of $59.95. Only one successful trade could more than pay for the cost of this entire package. Linda, we sold your sugar contract and you just made a good profit. Nice going. That's great. If you order now, 
Shape will also include seasonal cash charts. This valuable tool tracks price movement month to month, in some cases as far back as the 1700s. A $40 value absolutely free. The entire Trade Your Way to Riches package is valued at over $400. They can now be yours for only three easy payments of $59.95. I'm so confident you can make money that I'm offering you this guarantee. If you can't make money within 30 days, or you're dissatisfied for any reason at all, return the entire package for a full refund. Look, the call is free. You've got my guarantee. There are no excuses. Order now. Don't wait another minute. Order right now. Back in 1983, I had first gotten involved in futures markets, and um, I purchased lots of products and books and things so I could learn as much as I could about the subject. And when I finally felt that I was knowledgeable enough to, um, to get involved on a serious basis, I was contacted by a client in Australia who had uh, a large amount of money for me to, that he wanted me to invest and trade for him. And so I started that in about 1986. And we happened to get in at the beginning of one of the largest moves in the Australian dollar that occurred at the time in 1986. We got in from the very beginning, and for three straight months, the position we had kept increasing and increasing, making more and more money for that entire three-month period, qualifying as the most exciting three months of my life. And uh, in that three-and-a-half-month time frame, I had made $1.5 million for this client, and that allowed me to make dramatic changes in my lifestyle. I was riding a bicycle at the time, living in a small apartment in Lafayette, Louisiana, um, barely getting by, <coughs> and this particular trade in the futures market with uh, this client allowed me to go from a bicycle to a Porsche, which was my dream car at the time, and I paid cash for it, so it was um, one of the changing moments of my life. I've been working with Jake Bernstein and, uh, uh, and trading futures for 25 years now. I don't know anybody who has more extensively researched the markets than Jake. I bought the Jake Bernstein course and completed it in one evening and started making money immediately. He teaches you about commodities <laughs> in such a way that you say to yourself, I always thought this is very complicated. It's not really that complicated. Probably what people have ever said to you about it, it sounded complicated, but the way he puts it together, it's not complicated at all. There is risk involved in commodities trading, but if you don't take a risk, you won't reap the rewards. I've dedicated my professional life to developing time-tested methods. I can show you what you need to know from A to Z to get started. Trading futures is simple if you follow my plans and my rules. Anyone who guarantees you success is lying to you. Past performance is not indicative of future results. No system or method guarantees success but I sincerely believe I can give you the tools you need to begin trading your way to riches. Ultimately, success or failure is up to you. Folks, I've read all the books and listened to all the tapes on how to get rich quick. Okay, that's enough of Jake. Uh, so what do you think of Jake? Well, it's most, is there, have not people traded system, and since this data is so specific, couldn't you take an opposite of what he's saying and make money by it on an artificial price movement? Well, I don't, you know, I don't think enough people are trading his system. Uh, and you know, he's, he's talking about seasonals, and it is true that in some markets there, there is some indication of seasonal price behavior, but uh, you know, there's no guarantee, and it's it's an argument that's often used in heating oil, uh, and you'll start to hear these ads on television, radio. But uh, you know, if you just took the opposite position, again, it's fairly risky strategy, uh, not having uh, you know not having researched it and not having a good good reason to take that position other than Jake's on the other side of the market, you know. <laughs> But you know, you know, he's he's like Ken Roberts. He he doesn't make money trading. He makes money selling those videos. And he's you know, uh, I guess fairly persuasive sort of guy. That's why I like to dress like him. Uh, <laughs> um, any other comments on Jake? 
that's, I mean, that's technical trading, right? You, you heard it from one of the experts. Uh, history repeats itself. All you have to do is buy my system and uh, just sit back and trade and you'll, and you'll get rich. You know, if you mailed away for the videos, you, you spent the money on that, then he's happy from there on in. You know, there's a 50-50 chance you'll make money uh, or lose money. And, you know, these testimonials from the lawyer who quit to hang glide and so on. I mean, it'd be interesting to see what he's doing today. Or can you imagine being in the Porsche sales room and this kid rides up in a bicycle and says, here, I want to pay cash for this car. And yeah, it's just not very plausible. Um, but, you know, I, you know, it's, you need to be exposed to this because there are a lot of traders out there that uh, are basing their trading on systems like this. Um, any other questions? Yes. Well, Bernstein and Kenner, is that all marketing, or did they actually make, have to have some kind of pedigree in order to go out and you know, say they made money in the market? It's all marketing. It's all marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, you notice there were little disclaimers there, right? So, yeah. I mean, you have no idea uh, as to whether or not they've ever made money trading these systems. You really don't know. And, you know, if you go to Ken Roberts' website, he has testimonials on there, too, and a very similar sorts of stories, like, you know, I wanted freedom in my life, so I subscribed to Ken's uh, system, and now I'm making lots of money, and anybody can do it. I mean, it's, if something is too good to be true, it's, it's not true, right? Uh, okay. Um, I'll just introduce hedging today. We don't want to get too carried away today. Um, and, and maybe the best way to do it is to uh, talk about this airline example. Actually, no, I've unplugged. Let me plug this back in. Um, here we go. The story that I sent you is uh, from this spring. It was in March, and it, and it discussed the um, alternative strategies that are followed by some of the uh, major airlines. Come on. I want to pull up this chart. And it was kind of interesting because uh, there was one major airline in March that uh, was not hedged at all. They had zero position in the market. And that happened to be United Airlines, which is one of the larger airlines in the company. And uh, United has lost a lot of money this year. And there's no question that part of it is because of the price of jet fuel. I'm trying to pull up. Crude oil, come on. <laughs> Not cooperating with me. Um, the story goes back to March. Let's see if I can get heating oil up here. Oh, there we go. And back in March, um, right here, um, the market was up to $30 a barrel. Okay, so that's, that's about the time this story was written. And uh, it discusses uh, the airlines that, that are hedged. For example, Southwest Airlines was 100% hedged, and some of the others had some of their positions hedged. And so Southwest Airlines went into this uh, period of rising prices with a fully hedged position, and they had locked in a price of about $23 a barrel. They're buying jet fuel. There, isn't, there are no jet fuel futures, so they either use crude oil or heating oil as a substitute, and that's technically called cross-hedging. Um, United Airlines uh, did not hedge at all, so it meant that every day in this rising market, when they pulled their 747s up to, to refill, uh, they had to pay the going price. And uh, according to this article, if the price of jet fuel rises by one cent 
a one cent increase in the price of jet fuel will result in an increased cost to um, airlines in the U.S. of $180 million a, a day, a, a year, I'm sorry, $180 million a year for a one cent increase because they buy 18 billion gallons. It's the second largest cost component of running an airline, uh, jet fuel behind labor. So it's extremely important. And we have some airlines that are not hedging. Uh, the reason that Southwest hedged going into this rise in prices, of course, was uh, the uncertainty in the Middle East, and there were also some problems in Venezuela with oil production. Um, but they were concerned about the impact of the Iraq War. And uh, shortly after the article came out, you saw the price fell, and that's about the time that we declared victory, right? And um, our president was on the, that aircraft carrier with a big banner in the background that says, Mission Accomplished. Have you read about the controversy over that? Somebody asked him about that the other day. Well, you were on that aircraft carrier last spring, and you know this big banner said "Mission Accomplished," but you know, was it really accomplished? And he said, "Well, that wasn't my banner. That was the ship's, and they were talking about their mission." And uh, then the next day, the White House had to correct his statement. And in fact, he did bring the banner from the White House, so it was his banner. Um, so the market fell because we declared victory. Um, and then it started to rise again. As you know, there have been continued problems in Iraq. So um, the article on the, the, the airline strategy should really be put in this context of what's been happening in the oil market. So you know, looking back, uh, Southwest had all their fuel locked in at $23 a barrel. Uh, they said for this entire calendar year, which uh, has resulted in, you know, huge savings for this airline. And it's no wonder their stock price is up. And it's no wonder that United Airlines, which is my airline, has declared bankruptcy because uh, they weren't uh, adept enough to get involved in a hedging program. Okay? So you can keep that in uh, mind as you start reading the, the hedging chapter. Um, and I'll refer back to this example quite often because it provides us with a nice a uh, real-world example of the benefits of hedging uh, at the same time uh, the cost of not hedging as uh, discussed in the article for United Airlines. Okay? Um, so it seems like um, the market in the, in the case of oil is still, still trying to decide um, what's going to happen in the Middle East and uh, it's, who knows, maybe United Airlines is now locking in a price at $30 a barrel. I hope not. but. Uh, Southwest is in good shape anyway. Okay, we'll go ahead and hand back the uh, exams. I'll divide them in half. David's going to help me. Once again, the mean was 75. Okay, so you'll take A through, okay.